I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. Inkscape 1.2 is here, new and improved, and along with the enhancements to the interface, there were some changes that really sped up the workflow on previous tutorials we've done. Today, I wanna to revisit the mandala design, and I'll show you step-by-step step how you can create something like this, and we'll do it by using two live path effects layered on top of each other. Sounds like a lot, but it's very easy. You can draw one line at a time, and it will mirror and multiply all over the design at once, which lets your creativity flow. So let's begin. We wanna to go to a square page. Up here, you'll see a piece of paper with a wrench. Click on that. This is your document properties menu. I'm set to the default A4, which is 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters. We wanna to go to 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters. Gives you a nice preview and you'll see it right there. X out of that. And the next important step is to go to extensions, render, guides creator. Here comes another pop-up menu. You wanna be on guides preset custom, columns two, rows two. That will give us a perfectly centered vertical and horizontal axis. Apply, there you go. Closed. One of the new changes in Inkscape 1.2 is the snapping menu is not on the top or the side anymore. It's up here. It's this little, I call it a magnet with a lightning bolt. If you click on it, you enable it. And if you click on the triangle, it'll show you what you're actually enabling. I'm going to keep almost everything the same. I'm unselecting bounding boxes. And the most important selections for this exercise is other points, object midpoints, object rotation centers and down here, grids, grid lines. Page border, I'll actually unselect that. That gets in the way sometimes. Minimize this whole thing by pushing the delta again, and we're ready to go. Let's grab the circles and ellipses tool right here. If I hold shift and control together, it'll give me a nice even circle. This will serve as the center for our design. And while we're here, let's check the fill and stroke menu to see how we have it set up. If you don't have your menu open, go to object, fill and stroke. It'll populate over here. I'm on the color wheel, which will display this thing. On the fill tab, I want no fill. On the stroke, I'll choose dark blue of some sort. Click over to stroke style. Because we set up the page in millimeters, our width is gonna be in millimeters, I'm at 0.50. Now you'll see why we did that snapping to the center feature. If I drag this towards the hash marks, right there, it knows where to go exactly. Let's zoom in and put your circle towards the bottom of your screen if you're following along. We're gonna set up one half slice of the mandala design and then use the path effects to mirror it, rotate it, and multiply it. All right, grab your Bezier pen tool. And first, let's see what the settings are. I'm at 0.5, I think I'll go with a 1.0 millimeter just so it's easier to see, which means we should change our circle as well. 1.0. Back to the line. The other settings you want to change on join, go to the second one, which is round join. And for cap, go to the second one, which is round cap. Because we're going to mirror across the center line, if you have two boxed off lines, it'll look jagged. We don't want that. We want it nice and smooth. One more thing to point out, normally up here, there's these four corners with arrows. Usually, the first one is selected, which is helpful if you're changing the size of an object. It keeps the width and proportion, you see that? But for this exercise, as we go along, I want everything to stay 1.0 millimeters. So I'll deselect it. And now if I were to make this circle bigger, you see, it stays at the 1.0 millimeter. You don't have to do that, but it is helpful for something like this. Now we can take our first line, put it against the guide, it's gonna snap right to it. You can control D and duplicate it if you want, just drag it up somewhere, it'll snap again. Or you can draw them fresh off the line, they don't have to be perfectly parallel. The more lines you do, the more you're gonna be mirroring and multiplying. Click off of everything. Here's a tip I think I learned from Logos by Nick like four or five years ago. If you hold Alt down, your selector tool, if you click and drag, will make a red line and everything that you go through is selected. We wanna do that. You can do that fancy trick or just select them all one at a time. Control G, group. I just realized something. These little lines, I have a white graphic from the intro that I put on the background here. That is on top. Let's put that on the bottom. All right, grab the grouped selection of our five lines coming off this guide. Go up to path, 
path effects and you'll see nothing on the sidebar you want to go down to this plus here is the menu and this is always kind of different based on how your screen is set up i want to find mirror symmetry right here and there you go that will mirror it once hit plus again we're going to add another path effect this time we want rotate copies and it's going to jumble it up but that's good let's do 12 8 or 12 let's do 12. Now we want to take this whole thing and bring it to the center point. So you have to go to edit paths by node and you'll see a little diamond in the center. Drag that down and it's going to lock into that center line right there. This is what you want it to look like. Doesn't have to be exact, but you want everything to be radiating from the center here. Because now, since we did that, I'll zoom in a bit. You can go and grab one of these original lines that you did. I'll take an endpoint, bring it down to the circle. It'll snap in there and it will create, look at that, some of your mandala design almost automatically. Don't grab it from the center line, grab it anywhere else and you choose where they go. You can take a handle, widen it, shorten it. I'll zoom out so you can see it working across the whole thing. The second to last one, I don't want to crisscross. I'll join it together with the other. Same for up here. I think I'll put this one right against the last one. Bring that out. If you see a connection that didn't hit, like this right here, just click on it and bring it together. And that will fix it across everything. So at this point, if you watch the previous tutorial, you're saying, same as before, right? Right, but here is the huge change. Go to Object, Layers and Objects. I named this layer that we're working on, everything you see, it's called the Mandala layer. If I hit the delta, I can see there's a path. This eyeball lets you toggle on or off. That's that center circle. So center circle is one item, and the only other item is that group of lines that we did. If I hit the delta, you can see a mistake. So that white background here, that was grouped in originally, so it created that group. This is the group right here, which includes the lines that we made. Here are our original lines. There's the top one, second one, and so on. All that matters is the group that has the path effects on it, that's the one that you need to be on if you wanna add more things and always have it reflect at the same time. Here's how it worked in the last tutorial. I would create a new line. It would be on the layer, but it wouldn't reflect. See, nothing, control Z. But now if you wanna go faster and really let your creativity flow, click on the group that contains your mirrored and rotated path effects, right click on the mouse and enter group, whatever group it is. Your highlight bar will turn into a darker color. So if it was light blue, it'd be dark blue. Now when I put a new line, it goes everywhere. Anything you do now stays in this path effect group and I mean anything so if I go to pencil zoom in and just draw some lines here it's going to go all over my design and you can imagine how much faster this works now we just have some fun I'll grab the circle tool let's make a circle here <laughs> everywhere I move it it moves across the design. Snapping is going to come into play and sometimes want to take your design. So maybe we'll turn it off briefly. This is what I like about Inkscape 1.2. I can toggle off just by hitting that icon. I've got my circle here and spacebar will stamp it out. So spacebar it there, spacebar. Do we need more circles? Let's go back to good old Bezier pen. Maybe draw some lines right in here. I think I'll do a time jump here to fill some of this empty space. And like that, we'll zoom out and see what we did. There we, I probably could have filled in more here, but that's good for today. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have questions, let me know in the comments below. If there's something else you wanna see, tell me what you want. Thanks and see you next time.